Turn in, my Lord. Turn into me. Fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent. And it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here? That thou shalt say no. Then Jael Heber's wife took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Well, I was thinking about the tent. It's the world. It's, getting, it's, it's the alluring of that tent to get you out of the Christian life, which is a little more grueling at times. A little more uncomfortable at times. Maybe it's not as flashy. Maybe you're not going to have a stick of butter with you out on the battlefield. Maybe you're not going to have butter in a lordly dish. Maybe your rations aren't going to be as appealing as what's in that tent. But see, the devil is exactly like Jael the Kenite. You see, he'll offer you something that looks and tastes good. The devil will hold it out to you, and I'm talking about sin, I'm talking about wrong. He'll hold it out to you in a lordly dish. He'll hold it out to you in a format that's appealing to you. He'll give you that butter in a lordly dish. But it's no sooner than that butter has gone into your stomach, and you're laying down digesting the commodity, the, the precious food and, and commodities that he's given you, no sooner will you find a spike coming through your head. Ending your life in a gruesome way. You see, that's how the devil is. He'll, he'll give you what you want. The devil will give you what you want. What do you want? You want to you party and have fun and the frills and money? Hey, the devil will give it to you if you want it. It's out there for you and the devil will give it to you. What do you want? He'll give it to you, but as soon as you're not looking, he'll come around and he'll stab you in the back. They can't understand... How could I make the sacrifice of living for God? Good night. How do you make the sacrifice of living for the devil? I mean, you've got the spike in your head right now, friend. Your, your life is a joke. Your life's miserable. You're, you're in this pit of just despondency and, dis, and despair and disgust. I, I can't understand it. But that's exactly the way the devil is. He'll put on all the sin. He puts out the rap music. That just makes it look so cool to be in the ghetto. It's so cool to drive that hoopty down the road. It's so cool to have your bottle of booze in the brown paper bag. And it's so cool to pick up some sleazy woman by the side of the road. But hey, my friend, I've been there. I've seen it. I've been to that house. I've been there the next morning. i talked to those people. It's a lie. Because the devil is a liar from the beginning. And he's the father of it. You see, the devil has nothing to hide. He's a liar. He's like jail. Come on in. Hey, I've got butter in a lordly dish. I've got milk. I've got comfort. Come on in. You'll be safe here. Hey, don't worry about it. If anybody asks, I'll say that there's nobody here. Don't worry about it. But as soon as you're asleep, as soon as you let your guard down, you can just picture it, can't you? You can just picture the hammer in one hand and the spike in the other hand. <laughs> She sneaks up on him and kills him. Hey, look, that's what the devil is. He's a liar. Hey, the Budweiser ad doesn't look anything like the south side of Chicago where you see the Budweiser because he's a liar. Don't be fooled by the devil. It starts out with a bunch of people, you know, wearing suits and they're sitting in a nice restaurant. They've got money. And they're, uh, they're laughing. They're having a great time. They, they got the Lexus out in the parking lot. And they're just drinking and partying and having a great time. But then it ends up 20 years later when they get a bad batch of cocaine and they lose their mind. And they go insane. And they're walking down the street holding a CD, staring at it, screaming and cussing themselves out in the reflection on a CD that they're staring at because they've lost their mind. I've known people. I've known a man that was successful. He had all kinds of money. He got into cocaine. Because alcohol led him into drugs. Drugs led him into worse drugs. Led him into cocaine. He fried his brain one time on a bad batch of cocaine. See, you have to understand that it starts out with the butter in the lordly dish and it ends out with the spike through your temples every time. That's the devil's plan. 
That's his method. The Bible says that the way of the transgressors is hard. The way of transgressors is hard. See, he ended up working harder. Because why? Because he was lazy. I don't want to work. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Hey, look, buddy. Nobody's telling you what to do. But I'll have somebody tell me what to do all day and sit in an air-conditioned van with a cold soda pop in my hand and I'm looking at you out in the hot sun pushing around some shopping cart. You're going to be sleeping in some cardboard box somewhere because it felt so good for you to drink that liquor. It felt so good for you to take those drugs and shoot them up into your arm. It felt so good when you quit your job and said, I'm tired of having to get up at the same time. I just want to live it up. But hey, it doesn't feel so good now that you can feel that spike penetrating your temples, does it, sir? Because you're feeling the pain now, and I'm comforted, and you're the one that's suffering. Because you, enjoy, you chose to enjoy the pleasures of sin for such a short season, and now you're going to spend the rest of your life on a street corner. You're going to spend the rest of your life holding up the cardboard sign. You're going to spend the rest of your life a laughing stock and a joke and a fool and a failure in life. You blew it, sir. A tent was not what it was cracked up to be. It's not all that you thought it would be, was it? The point of the sermon is this. The devil is a liar. He'll get out the lordly dish. He'll serve you the delicacies. He'll give you the good life on a silver platter. He'll offer it to you. He'll say, what do you want? I'll give it to you. But I'll tell you something. No sooner than he gives it to you. No sooner than you've got what you wanted so bad. You've, you've got the relief of just, yeah, you don't have the rules anymore. You don't have the stress of, you know, somebody telling you what to do. And the preacher is preaching against your sin. And, and the Bible's got all these rules in it. It just seems like you just can't do what you want. No sooner will you break out of that freedom of, of just sinful living, free living, whatever you want. No sooner will you get into that self-gratification of physical pleasurable sin. But somebody's tiptoeing towards you that you don't realize. And it's the same devil that gave you everything you wanted. Except this time he's coming with a hammer in his hand. And this time he's coming with a nail in his hand. And he has no purpose other than to nail your head to the ground and kill you. 